And hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. Ermin here. I want to take this video to talk about SAS certification. As some of you may know, I've been teaching SAS programming for a number of years, and some of you have taken some of my courses. Some people take my courses to prepare uh, for a SAS certification. Other people take my courses because they use SAS at their work. So they find that when they take a course, they can, you know, get up to speed really quickly on the content. You know, sometimes you don't want to always ask your coworkers or your boss uh, how to do stuff. So people look for quick ways, convenient ways to get up to speed with something. And then there's another group of people uh, where they know that their company uses SaaS or they're sort of interested in SaaS and they think that it can come in handy in the future for them uh, so they can sort of um, get an opportunity at work. Maybe there, there will be an opportunity uh, later on at their work um, where they're going to need somebody that uh, knows how to program in SaaS and they also take the course. So no matter in whatever situation you are, you might be interested in doing SAS certification. I won't talk too much if I think it's valuable or, or not valuable. I think it can be valuable in some cases, but it might not be in other cases. Uh, for example, if I tell you my story, well, the way I got into SAS programming was I was an undergrad uh, at university. Uh, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I lost, I lost my voice there for a second. Um, when I was in undergrad, I was doing a honor psychology uh, degree and I had statistics classes. And in those statistics classes, we would learn uh, SAS and we got introduced to SAS and we also got uh, introduced to other software. Now, in most of my university classes, though, we used SPSS. I'm sure many of you have heard uh, of that software. And the difference between it and SAS programming is that the SPSS is, is a graphical user interface that, so you have these different menus and you use these menus to run, you know, a different statistical analysis and so forth. I always was drawn more though to the programming side. So I was looking at, well, I like statistical programming and I want to be able to actually write code, not just use the graphical interface. So that's how uh, I got into uh, SAS and then I just really uh, got into uh, studying it a lot, but it all really started from getting exposed to it uh, in university. Now, some of you may be in a very similar situation to mine when I was uh, at university, and that is that you're using something like SAS Enterprise Guide at the company that you're working for, but you wanna be able to go beyond the menus uh, and the interface and actually uh, use code. So whatever your case is, uh, I welcome you. And I will now get into answering particular questions about SAS certification. So one of the questions that I get is how long the exam is. So the exam takes about 135 minutes to complete, so a bit over two hours. The new exam, by the way, is called SAS Certified Specialist Base Programming Using SAS 9. Point four. So this exam came out not long ago, uh, probably six months, eight months, maybe even up to a year, but it's still uh, fairly new. Now, for those of you who have the old exam or who have completed and passed the old exam, that exam was called SAS Certified Base Programmer for SAS 9. If you have that one, you can take a shorter exam. It's also less expensive. It's about 75 minutes. It has about 18 to 22 questions and it costs around 
75 US dollars. And in those cases, uh, you can use exam ID A00-233. I'll put up a link where you can uh, find more uh, information about that. But if this is your first uh, go around, the cost is 180 US dollars for many countries, of course, including the US. If you're in India, it is also $180. Uh, I have quite a few uh, Indian students. Now let me just confirm the current price is in fact 180. Yes, in India it is right now 180. Most places is 180. Let me also check I have some uh, Brazilian students as well. So Brazil is also 180 uh, USD. As mentioned, most of the countries it is that way. In the cases where it's less, it's not really less, but it's in a different currency. So for example, in some countries, the British pound is used. So it's 115 British pounds, but the pound uh, is better or higher uh, value when compared to the American dollar. So you're not paying really any uh, less. For those of you that might be doing predictive uh, modeling exam, that one is a little bit more expensive, but uh, I won't talk about that one here. So you've got the uh, how many hours it is. Uh, you now know how much it costs. So let me talk about the type of questions that you're going to face. Now, the first thing to know about it is that it is a performance-based exam. And really all that means is you're going to actually have questions where you're going to have to code to figure out the answer. So even if the question is multiple choice, it might require you to do a little bit of coding to figure out if it's A, B, C, or D, let's say. Now this performance-based aspect is the first section or the first part of the two-part SAS Certified Specialist, uh, Specialist Exam. So the exam is two sections or two parts. The first one is this performance-based uh, part. And I wanna actually show you a question that's the similar or almost the same as you will get in the uh, exam. So you might get around 20 questions or so. And what they're going to involve is they're gonna give you a data set, something like this, but it might actually come as a SAS data set. And then they're gonna give you a bunch of instructions and say, do this and this and this, so that you can answer the actual question. And most of the questions, I think all of the questions, in fact, in the performance section are all multiple choice, but to get the multiple choice correct, it requires some coding. So this is why they call it the performance-based portion. So let's take a look here. So you have a data set. A data set is called simple data. It's got these variables in there. Uh, and this is the actual data. And it has three steps that you have to follow. The first one being create a data set called MATHOP and read in the simple data data set. So again, what do you need to know here so far? You need to be able to know how to create a new data set and you need to know how to read in the simple data data set and you need to know what is the simple data data set. Well, if you have a little bit of experience, you know this is the simple data data set because this is how you start a data step using SAS and this is how you uh, create a new data set and this is how you name it as well. And then, do you know how to read in this data set uh, that's called simple data? Well, you would know that one way you can do that is to use the set statement to read it in, uh, let's say. So then it tells you, you do not have to place it in a CSV, it takes your XLSX format, you can just copy and paste it or put it in stream. And in stream, it just means inside of the coding area. And tells you, you may need to format it though, only one space between each data value. 
Then it tells you to multiply var underscore one by var underscore two. So that's right here, right? And save the value in a new variable called var result. So that's another skill that you need to have. You need to know how to create a new variable and then use the other two variables and multiply them, okay? And then it tells you step three, add var underscore four to var underscore eight together. Treat missing values as zero and assign this addition to var nine, okay? And it then tells you you'll be able to answer the first two questions by using the scenario. So then it asks you the question, what is the value for var underscore result observation one? So what is the value for var underscore result? So this uh, variable that you created out of multiplying these two here, it's asking you for the value. And so then you just answer the multiple choice question once you figure that out. So that's the first section, around 20 questions. And then the second section is a non-coding section. It is also largely multiple choice. On occasion, short answer, you might need to fill in, uh, like a fill in the blank type situation, but mostly multiple choice as well. And uh, it is non-coding, doesn't mean that it's not difficult just because it's uh, you don't have to do any actual coding but let's take a look uh, at an example of what you will see. So here they give you, let's say a very short SAS program. You have this data step here, uh, a data set called my underscore data, and it's got two variables, uh, char one and char two. Char two though is a result of using what's called the sub str or sub string right hand application of the substring function. So you have to be comfortable with knowing, of course, what is the right hand application or right side application of sub str function. So be, be become comfortable using that function. And then you would know what these things in here mean to be able to answer this multiple uh, choice uh, question. So that is, as I said, the question, what is the value of uh, chart two. So these are the two sections. Uh, and again, the expectation is that it would take you a bit over two hours uh, to answer uh, these questions. Now, there's many different questions uh, that can be asked on an exam. But one very cool thing is that, and I'll, I'll put the link in the description, there are some areas that a SAS exam is going to cover in every exam. So you'll notice when you go to the sheet here, it says all 23 main objectives will be tested on every exam. The 70 expanded objectives are provided for additional explanation and define the entire domain that could be tested. So if you take a look added here, you can have a very good idea of 100% what you need to know uh, what is going to be uh, tested. So just to make this clear, I will link to the 23 areas that will for sure be on your exam. And then I will link you to the full list, the 70 expanded objectives. So that way you have an idea of areas that you know 100% are going to be in the exam and then other ones that may or may not be. So that's a really uh, useful thing to know to prepare. Now, another common question I get is, what is the passing score? So the passing score is a scaled score. So it's not the raw score that you get. So let's say there's 40 questions on the exam and there are approximately 40. Let's say you, uh, each question is worth one point. You got 30 out of the 40. So you have 30 out of 40. That is your raw score, the 30. So what they do then is they take the 30 and they scale it. And they will scale that to a number between 200 and 1000. The passing score is 725. Now, I don't know and nobody knows exactly what your raw score will get 
what it will convert to as a scaled score. That depends how exactly they have standardized this exam. And unfortunately, really nobody knows how they've standardized it. But I would think that something around 30 out of 40 questions would probably be near a pass or a pass. So it's kind of hard to know, but what they've tried to do with the standardization is to try to make it uh, the same level of difficulty from exam to exam. So I'm sure they've gone uh, right uh, about it. Uh, but I think if you go in uh, really prepared, uh, you'll be able to uh, ace it, uh, no problem. The final thing that I will answer, and uh, I get asked quite a bit as well, is how would you uh, prepare for it? So there's a number of ways that you can go about preparing for it. Um, one of the ways, of course, would be simply there's you know YouTube videos. Of course, you can watch. There's uh, you know some free content uh, that you can get on YouTube. Type in you know SAS based programming. Uh, find a tutorial that you like and uh, you know watch it. And you know there is no uh, alternative to practicing. You know that's the way that uh, that you get good is through practice. So that's certainly. Uh, one way to do it. There is free content uh, out there. Even on their website, I will add some resources that you can look at it. They do have some sample questions uh, on uh, their website. Now, personally, the way I studied was it was through a combination of many things. Uh, they were uh, YouTube videos, they were books, they were courses. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily you know, suggest one thing over another. It depends how you learn. But I think it's also a good idea um, to just try different things. You know, uh, some might be more interesting for you than others. There is a bunch of training and exam preparation right on their own website. Uh, so they've got a bunch of uh, training. Uh, here, SAS Programming One Essentials is one of them. And um, you can see here uh, that they actually have it right now. Uh, the fee is actually free. Uh, if you do it self-paced, and then Classroom and Live, it's about over 2,000 Canadian dollars if you wanna do it live uh, on the web. Uh, and then, so you would need to do this first one and the second one as well. So they've got a second course here as well. And let me see if this one is free or if this one costs something. So this one, so this one is not free. So this one is almost a thousand Canadian bucks to uh, do the second portion. And if you want to do it live web, it's 1500. So this is not uh, cheap, uh, that's for sure. For, for just learning the basics, not cheap in my opinion. They've got a book uh, here as well, SAS Certified Special Prep Guide using SAS 9.4. So that is certainly a, another uh, option here. And this one is 79 US dollars, okay? So that's definitely another way. Uh, they have some sample questions uh, you can download here. Uh, they have a practice exam option here and they have additional resources. Uh, as I said, I learned through a combination of things um, and uh, I've been teaching SAS for a number of years. So I also have uh, a prep exam uh, and I also have a full SAS uh, course all of that will be in the description. Please feel free to look uh, there for all of the things I've talked about here. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave those as well uh, on, uh, on the bottom of the video. And that's it. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, please subscribe and uh, see you around everyone.